Father, we do come before you and we thank you for your word, your word that is powerful, living, and active. Powerful, living, and active in each and every one of us because we choose to be doers of the word and not hearers only. I thank you, Lord God, that every place that we go, we bring the transforming power of the anointing of God into that place, into our workplaces, into our families, into our homes. I thank you, Lord God, that you have called us into this earth to be change agents in every area. So, Lord, I thank you that that means the change begins in me first. Everybody say, Lord, Lord. the change begins in me first. And I accept it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to, I, I talked a little bit about this this morning, and I want to finish up, or not finish up, maybe start up, I'm, I'm not sure, with a little bit of it tonight, and it's, you know, dealing with conflict and dealing with adversity. We live in a, a fallen world, all right, and we are, as God's children, called to um, bring heaven to earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we get to do as part of the mandate, as part of the great commission of what Jesus sent for us to do. So it is about looking at a situation and saying, is that how it is in heaven? And if it's a no, then guess what? We're supposed to not agree with that. We're supposed to agree with how it would be in heaven. Is there any sickness in heaven? Okay. So that means that we get to be a part of helping to eradicate sickness in the earth. And I was so excited because Tammy just got back from um, Idaho and uh, had an opportunity on the way there. She sat beside uh, a man who had diabetes. Is it all right if I share this? I mean, she just shared it with me two minutes ago. Okay. And diabetes, and she was just kind of praying for an opportunity uh, to share. And he, he was blind, and she said the whole flight, she just kind of talked to him about the Lord and things like that, but just didn't feel that, that peace to really pray for him. So how many of you know, I mean, you can sit down and you can just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit to just start sharing the things of, of God. And she was just kind of really praying and didn't, didn't get a release. And here, when they got off the plane, they... They got off, and they had to sit down, and she had this opportunity to pray for him, and um, it was just a really sweet time. He was so appreciative, and how do you know, I think, I believe we're going to someday, hopefully on earth, hear a testimony of God's healing. Okay, I'm going to focus now. So, um, you're dealing with conflict and adversity as a part of life and letting God, um, even, he'll use those okay, to benefit us if we'll choose to do things his way, if we'll choose his principles and his perspective in different situations. And it's so important that we learn to do that because when we get all wrapped up in ourselves, guess what? We're going to mess it up because we're, we're going to try to deal with it from a very, a place of hurt, a place of self, a place of offense, and, and those types of things. And in Proverbs 17, verse 3, it says, The refining pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold, but the Lord tests the hearts. And how many of you know, when you're, when you're dealing with gold or silver, if you find a rock, okay, it usually is not this refined, beautiful gold or silver necklace, is it? It's pretty ugly, isn't it? I mean, it just looks like it's, it's a rock. It takes a lot of heat, a lot of fire to break off that hard shell, okay? And I believe with us, okay, it takes fire. It sometimes takes some adversity to get us outside of ourself. And God, I believe, uses adversity to melt away our pride, okay, of always feeling like we're right and we never want to be wrong and the way we want it is the way we want it. That's kind of pride. Um, to break off wrong perceptions, the victim mentality, the blame mentality, um, our self-centeredness that vies for the attention of our soul and it produces the wrong thing. Okay, but the fire of God wants to refine. It wants to reveal what needs to be changed within us so that the new man in Christ comes out. That's the whole reason for the fire. And, um, you know, Pastor Scott told a story this morning, so now it's my turn to tell the rest of the story. Okay, so anyway, uh, 
He said yesterday he was getting ready to go to the store, and I, you know, I was doing some things. I had some stuff I had to take care of in the garage and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, he he said, "I'm like, oh, where are you going?" And he's like, "Out." And I'm like, "Where are you going out?" And uh, <laughs> he did not want to tell me. And he's like, he, "She'll hijack my trip." I do not do that. He always makes rules for me. But anyway, uh, so I hurried up and I got showered and and. Uh, because we needed to run out to get some things. And he said, don't even mention Walmart. We're not going to Walmart. And I'm like, well, I hate to break something to you, but for two days we have not had a kitchen sink because it has been clogged, all right? Just so you know who got blamed for that. You're looking at her. I'm here to tell you I did not clog the sink, okay? <laughs> First... <laughs> First, he accuses me of putting stones down the drain. I'm like, what? I'm like, where do I get stones? Why would I put stones down the drain? <laughs> so anyway, are we? I, oh, that's not true. I did not drop my fish. Anyway, my my aquarium, my stones from my fish. Anyway, um, I'm be quiet. I'm preaching. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so we get this out. And he, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, honey, that's eggshells. And you're the one that makes me put it down. I keep trying to throw them in the garbage. And you're like, put them down the garbage. I was like, okay. So he's like, that's your, it's your fault. Talk about blame. Man. So that anyway, we figured out that wasn't it. So then we're trying to get it out. And I mean, we poured Drano down there. We poured bleach down there. And I, I have this little concoction that I do. And I pour a whole bunch of um, baking soda down. And then I do the white vinegar and, and things like that. So I was almost out. So don't you want to know why we had to go to Walmart? Because we had to get baking soda and white vinegar. That's why. <laughs> so anyway, and we got in and out pretty quickly. But just so you know, he had just put spaghetti down the garbage disposal. You're not supposed, I found out, don't you want to know what you're not supposed to put down the garbage disposal? Spaghetti or rice? Okay? So I'm like, See, it was not my fault. I did not clog the sink. He goes, it was your fault because you didn't eat it. <laughs> I'm like, man, there's no getting out of this. What is up with that? Oh, hallelujah. Why did I tell that story? Anyway, but, you know, the, the refining fire, it's to refine us, okay? And it's to, it's to bring those things out so that we don't get clogged up so that we don't you know make a mess of things and you know praise god we did pray over it both of us it's so funny because at different times we're both over there i command you to open up and drain in the name of jesus <laughs> and finally this morning it worked so <laughs> this is true with a little help from from the uh, other stuff but you know, so we want to let god's refining fire in us and sometimes that only happens when we're in a place where we're not comfortable, okay? We're in a place and we're having opportunities to not wring our spouse's neck when we're getting blamed for things or to not react or, you know, in the wrong way or do the wrong things and, and that type of thing. And I, I came across a story because understand that God can take adversities and he can turn them into opportunities, when we stop focusing on the adversity, how it's affecting us, how it's going wrong, how it's, you know, a, a frustration, those types of things. And if we'll focus on God, he'll turn it into an, an opportunity. How many of you all know um, Walt Disney? Because if you don't, I'll check, check you. But, um, you know, here's Walt Disney, all right? And when he uh, first started out, something happened that, just almost completely devastated him. Uh, there was a, distribu a dishonest distributor that uh, came to him and was, was working with him, and he ended up stealing his most popular cartoon. And I do not remember this cartoon, but it was Oswald and Lucky Rabbit. Okay, and then he not only stole his most popular cartoon that he really felt he was going to get some breakthrough in some areas in in his life, but he also this dishonest distributor hired all of his uh, cartoonists, his animators, except for one. So not only did he steal his idea, his creation, pretty much. 
he also took away those that helped him create it. Now, you know, you'd think, wow, that's, that can really hang you up. You know, if he would have focused, if he would have stayed in a place of bitterness, in a place of hurt, in a place of offense, I'm not sure would have Disneyland. I'm not sure would have Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse and, you know, all those, those types of things. You know, so the distributor thought he had won. He thought he won the company. But understand, his company later on went bankrupt. And we know the rest of the story because Walt Disney built an entertainment empire. I mean, powerful. So understand, adversities may come. People may wrong you. I mean, terribly wrong you. But what are you going to do from that place? Because if you choose to stay in hurt, in bitterness, in offense, then that is where you're going to stay. And that creativity, that, that voice that God wants to speak to you, you are not going to be able to hear clearly. Because one of the things that will stop us from hearing the clear voice of God is bitterness. It's unforgiveness. It's offense. Okay? It just takes us to a really, really bad place place. And you know, what I picked up from this story with Walt Disney and so many other stories is, you know, he could have focused on that man and what he did and how wrong, and he could have blamed him for destroying his life. And he could blame him for, I mean, he could have done that for the rest of his life. And guess what? It would have gotten him nowhere really, really fast. But you know, instead, if we'll just let go of the thing that, you know, the enemy, uh, recognize who the enemy is. We don't fight against flesh and blood, right? We fight against principalities. So whatever is coming at you, all right, it is, we can't make people be the enemy. We make the enemy, we attack the enemy, and people are not the enemy, okay? So very, very important that we know who we're attacking and who we're going after. We release, we forgive, all right, and then we move on. And uh, we, we keep the love of God and the flow of the blessings coming to our lives. Okay, so very important. Jeremiah 17, 5, and, and I've shared this before, but it kind of goes along with it. Because if we're going to constantly focus on men, okay, either to give us something that we need, or focus on men because they've taken something that we need, okay? It's not, it's not going to put us in a good place. We never, ever, ever want to trust in man. Because here's what the Word of God says in Jeremiah 17, 5. It says, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. Anytime you start focusing on blaming somebody for destroying your life, you have just given your power over to a person. You have made yourself a victim, and you will stay a victim until you stop that. Okay? So we're about changing here, right? In this house. So no, everybody say, no excuses. Okay? It's not about what man done to me. It is about what my God will do in and through me and for me. I'm favored of the Lord. Woo, he blesses me all the time. Hallelujah. Not, man doesn't always, okay? I've had man curse me. I don't know why. I try to be nice. But anyway, <laughs> but you know, it happens, okay? So curse is the man who puts his trust in man. Verse 6, for he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes. So if you're so focused on man, what somebody done did to me or what they should have done for me, what they said they'd do and they didn't do, you know, those types of things. It's not that God's blessings are not still coming to you. It tells me in the word, do, are we but word believers in this house? It tells me that we're not going to see the good that comes. We're going to miss it. It's going to go right by us. Why? Because we're going to be so focused on what's wrong, on the negative, on what we don't have, what we're not getting, what we missed out on, you know, the, that type of thing. We're going to miss out on a whole lot more. So we don't, want to, we don't want to go there. That's not where I want to live. That's not where I want you to live. Amen? 
shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land which is not inhabited. What they used to do in the Old Testament, uh, when they wanted to destroy a piece of property, they would sow salt into it so that it would be destroyed, so things wouldn't grow. So that's not what we want. Let's go on to verse 7. I like this better. Blessed. Everybody say, that's me. Why do I know that's you? Because if you belong to Jesus, you've already been blessed. Amen? Beyond measure. And, and just overflowing. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. Okay? He's going to come. Persecution might come. Adversity might come. Do we need to be afraid of that? Who goes before us and clears the way before us? Who brings every low place high and every high place low? The Lord. Who is our rear guard? Who makes us lay down in green pastures? Leads us beside still waters? Our cup runs over? Come on, we got to know what the Word of God says. I just agree with the Word of God. I don't focus on everything else. I agree with what God's Word says. And that's why it's so important, and why we encourage you to get the Word of God every day. Just get a word. Just get it. And, you know, I really encourage you to, um, you know, Proverbs. If you read a chapter in Proverbs, it's pretty much the month. And there is so much wisdom on how to deal with business, with wealth, with money, with relationships, with children. I mean, it's in, it's in Proverbs, okay? And I, I did. I took the youth through a pretty extensive uh, teaching of Proverbs. I don't know if they had as much fun as I did, but I thought it was good. I, I learned a lot. I'm trusting they did too. Praise God. All right, so um, what I want to talk a little bit and what I felt the Lord really lay on my heart on tonight is, you know, relationships and how do we deal properly in a godly way with relationships, whether it be our spouse, whether it be our co-workers, whether it be our children, you know, those types of things. So I, I went to Proverbs, all right, and we're going we're gonna to camp a little bit in Proverbs chapter 15, because when, when we get into conflict, when we get into arguments, okay, it's going to happen. I know you find this hard to believe because I, I'm so easy to get along with, but even Pastor Scott and I <laughs> get into intense fellowship at times. It's always his fault. <laughs> hey, I got blamed for the drain, so. <laughs> no, anytime there's an argument, um, there's, there's, it takes two to tango, baby. So let's not point fingers. Let's just accept our part of it and get God's heart for it, okay? So um, we've got to change the rules of engagement, okay, when we deal with conflict or when we deal with arguments. And we've got to, because the world's mindset is, it's about winning the argument. It's about getting things my way. It's about you, like, persuading someone to agree with me. And you don't love me or you don't care about me if you don't agree with me. Well, that's not fair, okay? That is, no, that ain't love, okay? We'll, we'll go to the love chapter if we need to go there, all right? Because love does not demand its own way. Pause and think about that for one moment, please, all right? So it's not about winning an argument. It's not about getting our own way. It's not about persuading someone to do what we want them to do. It's about achieving the best outcome for all involved. And, you know, We've really learned that uh, when we're not agreeing on something, that we, if we're not coming to an agreement and things are starting to get heated, we have learned to just step back. I used to call it go to our corners because literally it felt like m boxing matches when we were first married. <laughs> it doesn't anymore. But we would literally separate, go to the Lord, pray. And then come back. And if we still couldn't get to it, same thing. We're just like, well, we're not moving forward. We're not making a decision until we come into agreement. 
you know, and as, if we'll both seek God, then guess what? Usually both of us got to change in some way. It was never you're all right and I'm all wrong. Both of us had to change because, I mean, God is more interested in the best outcome for everyone, and that usually means everybody gets to change because God is always right, okay? So that's what makes life fun and, and uh, gets us involved. So how, how we engage in conflict is extremely important because if we don't have any rules of engagement, uh, we really turn it into um, making it all about defending ourselves. All right, and especially if we've come from, or if, if somebody has come from any type of uh, an abusive background, a background where they had been abused before, I'm telling you, it get, it's really hard to break this mindset, okay? To not feel like you have to defend every inch of territory, okay? And to really protect yourself. So it's, it's really letting God expose those things in our life. Turn the fire on, bring it to the surface and say, wow, God, uh, am I trusting you to defend me or am I trying to defend and protect myself, okay? So, you know, it's not about defending ourselves. It's not about our uh, point of view, making sure it's, we're being heard. Um, the, the rules of engagement, you do not attack, okay, or even counterattack. And I know that's really hard, okay, when someone is attacking you not to counterattack with the same thing, okay? And I call it hitting below the belt. Please, okay, learn never to hit below the belt, especially with family members, especially spouses, okay? Because you know, we know each other's vulnerable places. Don't do it, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna get to the Proverbs that shows us that we don't wanna do that, okay? We don't want to just say whatever comes to mind, please. You know, sometimes the things that come to mind are just hurtful, all right? And when we're angry, we usually want to hurt, okay? And we just got to learn, man, let's look, let's take a step back and look at the outcome. It's not just about this moment and making sure that I'm, I make you feel how you made me feel. Somebody has got to take a step back and say, Holy Spirit, this isn't going nowhere. How, how, what's the best outcome? How do we deal with this? Okay, so number one, avoid harsh, demeaning words. Okay, learn it. I, I, so many times I have... <laughs> I've seen parents correct their children and not permit their children to talk mean to each other or to other people. And then I have seen the parents just say the most demeaning, vulgar things. Just the other day, I'm, I'm out just minding my own business, and I'll get to that, but, and all of a sudden, there's an argument, and I mean to tell you the language that, I mean, the F-bomb was, was being thrown, and you're nothing but a blankety-blank, no good nothing, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord God in heaven, what is that sowing into that relationship? And, you know, here's the thing. If, if we do get if anger has come out and we have said things, here's the thing. Be quick to repent. You know, repent before the Lord. It's like, Lord, oh man, whoo! Obviously, I need you to put a guard over my mouth. You know, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, oh Lord my God. You know, and, and we might need some help in that area, but that's when the fire, if that keeps happening, I'm here to tell you that that is because it needs exposed in us. And God is trying to bring it to the surface to get it out, not for you to keep doing it, okay? So if it's coming, it's just like, before you say it, okay, Lord, wow. I don't know how that got in me, but somehow it got in me. So now, Lord, I'm asking you, get it out in the name of Jesus. And help me to resolve this in a constructive way that benefits everybody involved, okay? So, avoid 
harsh, demeaning words. Control your mouth. Use kind and gentle words to reduce tension. And let's look at Proverbs 15, verse 1. And I shared this a little bit this morning. A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And you know, I said, I shared this morning, this doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I just talk in a really sweet voice and I can say whatever I want as long as it's, it's kind of in a sweet voice. You rotten, low down, dirty thing, you. <laughs> but you know, I've, I've heard people like peel wallpaper, like in a kind voice. And I'm thinking, Wow, that was really mean and ugly. All right, so we, we don't want to do that. We want to speak the right things. And I, I, like it, I like what it says in the passion version for this. So, and I know I shared this a little bit this morning, but um, I just really like how it, break, how it broke it down. Respond gently when you are confronted, and you'll diffuse the rage of another. Responding with sharp, cutting words will only make it worse. Don't you know that being angry can ruin the testimony of even the wisest of men? Okay? So we want to make sure that our words, what we're speaking in this house, we understand that whatever we speak, we're creating. Okay? And I've shared this story a lot, but years ago... Um, when we were learning how to overcome a lot of stuff, and ah, we had we were having an intense fellowship about something. I mean, we're just going for a nice hike or walk, and I don't know how it happens, but the enemy likes to stir stuff up, you know. Obviously, something needed exposed, and um, we we started getting into this like heated discussion, you know. And all of a sudden, well, he can run faster than me, so he just took off and just left me, just left me. He did that in Africa, too. But anyway, no, he wasn't mad at me. He just forgot me there. <laughs> he just loved me. And I'm like, and this is what almost came out of my mouth. I'm just like, you are such a big jerk. And I was going to call him a jerk because, well, I thought he was acting that way. Okay? And the Lord, I mean, the Lord stopped me like that. And he's like, is that what you want? Is that what you want him to be? And I'm like, no, but it would feel really good to say it right now. <laughs> and he's just like, watch what you're creating, because you don't want him to be that way. And I'm like, you're right. I'm sorry, Lord. I repented. Um, I repented for my, my part in the discussion. And whether he re reacted right or responded right was irrelevant. The Lord dealt with me. And I started speaking. I thank you, Lord, that my husband is loving. He is kind. He is, you know, and I, start, I just started speaking those things. So I just kept walking. And pretty soon he's, I don't know, it wasn't that. It was a ways. It was a little ways up there. And uh, he's sitting there. And I go walking up. And I'm just like, Hey, <laughs> and he's like, I'm really sorry, and I'm like, oh, me too, <laughs> and hey, there, it benefits everybody, I love it, I love it when a plan comes together, God's, God's word really works, but we've got to be careful what we're releasing, what we're speaking into the atmosphere, okay, because we're creating things in each other, in our marriage, in our children, by the things that we're constantly speaking over them, all right, so we just, you, if you want a jerk for a spouse, I guess you can call him whatever you want. I just don't want a jerk. <laughs> I want a man of God, hallelujah, and I got one. He's good. He's my loving man. I love it. And then Proverbs 15.4, and this is in the Amplified. Uh, Proverbs 15, 4. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life, but willful, willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. Okay? So we want our tongue, we want what we speak to bring healing. Okay? And it's so important. Okay? Uh, number two, so that's avoid harsh, demeaning words. All right? Avoid anger. Okay, you're thinking, oh yeah, uh, okay, how do you avoid anger when you're like in this conflict and you're already angry? Well, you know, with God all things are possible. So if, if the other person carries around unresolved anger, avoid being drawn into the conflict with them. 
Have you ever known people? They're just angry people. They're angry birds, man. I mean, you say hi to them, and you're <laughs> it's just like, oh, good morning. It's like, mm, okay, wrong thing to say to you this morning. You know, they're just angry. They've got all these unresolved crazy things going on and but here's the thing am I gonna let them steal my joy am I gonna let them dictate how I'm going to respond or react to them and I'm accountable to God how I respond I either choose respond with Christ likeness or react and yes sometimes it does feel good in the flesh but later on trust me it it will not produce life it will not produce godliness okay so we want to um you know, in, if a person is angry all the time, we just may need to step back and limit some time, you know, around them and get in the right frame of mind. Many times uh, the anger has nothing to do with even the discussion that you started with the person. So that's why you don't want to get pulled into it. I mean, if it's just coming out of, like, the blue, like, what did I do? What did I say? Type thing. You know, don't make it about you. Just step back and say, okay you know what, I'm just going to step back right now because you're an angry bird. <laughs> Maybe don't say it that way. That would just upset them. Okay, but you know, you're angry and this is not a good time to deal with it. Um, if you're the person dealing with anger issues, uh, you know, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord to help you with that. That's what, he's so good at it. Don't try to go it alone. Don't try, I'm going to get this right. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to, no, it's not about self-will. It's about God's will, okay? Ask him. You know, just go before him. Lord, reveal the, re reveal the root of this anger. Why do I get angry at that? Why do I react that way? Lord, reveal that. And Lord, show me and help me to forgive. Help me to release that to you, Lord, and, and whatever wrong that's been done, okay? Proverbs 15.8, and this is in the Amplified also. Proverbs 15.8, a hot-tempered man stirs up strife, but he who is slow to anger appeases contention. Okay? So understand, if there's a lot of strife, you've got to start looking at the temperament of where, where it always is. All right? And it's not to point fingers to tell somebody how wrong they are. It's just... Are we inviting the, the fire of God to purify us, to bring out the gold and the silver and to get rid of the, the gunk that, that needs to be removed from us, okay? This is not to beat ourselves up or to beat anybody else up, okay? Please always remember that. So many times I hear people and they're like, well, yeah, this is what, and you should this and you should that. Yeah, I have found that so many times that doesn't get you very far. Just say, okay, Lord, how does this deal with me? And you know what, Lord, if it deals with that person, then begin to reveal it to them, Heavenly Father, uh, without us really pointing the finger. Okay, number three, avoid meddling in other people's conflict. Okay, like, <clears throat> um, I, I do not, the, the people that were having this major discussion and yelling at each other, um, I, I have said hello to them. I do not know them well. It was not my place to walk across the street and say, hey, guys, why don't you calm down and just talk nice to each other? It will get you a lot further. <laughs> I'm not sure I wouldn't have been, like, kicked out or kicked off of the driveway or something like that. You know, it, it, it wasn't my business, okay? So it, we need to avoid meddling in other people's conflicts. It'll get us in trouble. And uh, I'm even here to say... Uh, just be careful, okay? Just be careful. Now, if somebody's hurting somebody, oh, please, do something, because we never want to see anybody get hurt. But if they're just having a, a discussion, it's, it's better not to meddle. And where do I get this? I get it from the Word of God. Proverbs, and this is in the Amplified also. Proverbs twenty six seventeen. He who passes by stops to meddle with strife that is none of his business is like one who takes a dog by the ears. I have never done that. However, I'm thinking that I would get bit if I did. Okay? So that tells me 
if I meddle in somebody else's affair, and trust me, as pastors, it gets interesting sometimes because, you know, when, when we're sitting down, we're talking to people, and, you know, things are very heated. We're never here to take sides, okay? Please understand that. We're, we're here to take God's side, okay? Now, we have been accused, you're just taking their side. No, we're taking God's side here, okay? And sometimes the, the side is just like, whoa, okay, really, you're fighting about that? <laughs> you know, this isn't a big deal. But when you're, you're steeped in it, everything becomes a big deal. So we want to make sure that we're not doing that. And this is in the New King James. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4.11 says, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you, that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, and that you may lack nothing. Okay? So there are just some things we, we don't have a business getting muddled up in. Okay? I have found that when I, when I have done that, and I mean, sometimes you, you can think, oh, yeah, I want to, <sighs> yeah, they make up, and they're still mad at you, okay? So it's just best to uh, not meddle where you're not a part of. Uh, number four, and this is the last one, avoid giving advice when not asked, and that kind of goes along with avoid meddling and other people's conflicts and arguments. Avoid giving advice when not asked, and be careful when you are asked, okay? Because we know for a fact that there is always at least three or more sides to a story, okay? There's always one person, the other person, and then there's God's side, all right? And if more people's involved, there could be about five other sides of the story. And by the time you get there, you're trying to figure out what on earth happened. And if you only listen to one side of the story, you are not going to get the whole, you're going to get their perspective. And I'm, I'm never one to sit here and say that somebody lies to you blatantly. But I'm telling you, people's perceptions are very strong and they believe them. Okay? I mean, when some things that you, oh, we've had discussions intense sometimes, and you said this, I, that, that, that never came out of my mouth, you dreamt it, you did, did not, you did, did not, <laughs> you know, type thing, and, and you, you swear what you hear, and, and it's not always true, okay, so understand when you're listening to any given story, you are never ever getting all the facts, Okay, and I know that's really, that's tough. So when you're giving advice, just stick as, as close to biblical as advice as you can. Okay, just take it to the word of God. Just, you know, as, as much as possible. I, I used to get in trouble for this in my workplace because I would just, I would just take it to the word. And they would be like, where'd you get that from? I'm like, the word. Uh, what? Well, is that all you ever quote? I'm like, it's all that's worth hearing, okay? Because you don't want my opinion, because my opinion doesn't hold much clout, but the word holds a lot. So remember, um, there are many sides to a, a conflict. Proverbs 18, and this is in the Amplified. Proverbs 18, 13. He who hears a matter before he hears the facts, it is folly and shame to him, okay? And I, I'm here to tell you, just about every time that I have not followed this advice, I am the one that ended up just being goofy, okay? Being on the wrong side. Not, it, so you, you, you just have to. And I know that's so hard sometimes. I'm going to read that one again. He who answers a matter before he hears the facts, it is folly and shame to him. Powerful, huh? So we really, I mean, just try to hear all the facts and realize when you're hearing one side, you're not getting all the facts, okay? We have even things that we read in the paper, okay? 
We have recently, we had a friend who was accused of, um, he was given a misdemeanor for like vulgar, vulgarly, or I'm not using the right word there, but attacking somebody. Okay, well we found out that what happened was here, he, he had been a prison guard and one of the guys that was an inmate ran into him and started verbally accosting him, even like, like pushed him and shoved him and he just stood there and he's just like, listen buddy, I'm, I'm calling the cops, threatening his life and everything and when it came out in the newspaper, both of them were cited that they were both doing it. And that wasn't even the truth. And he's, he's just like, get, it's on video. They were in a place where it was on video. And they wouldn't even get the video. That's perplexing to me. Anyway, but I know even with, um, you know, whenever you wrecked your motorcycle, and it's in the paper, we're reading it, and we're like, that's not, that's not what happened. So understand you know, it's easy to do. It's easy to hear something and not get all the facts, okay? So we don't want to judge people for things, but we really want the counsel of the Lord. We really want the wisdom of God when we're listening to, especially areas of conflict or adversity, you know, those types of things. We don't, try not to pick sides. Always take God's side. Okay, because God's side is always about reconciliation, and God's side is always about restoring. Okay, all righty. Uh, Proverbs 9, uh, starting with verse 7, and you're not going to have this one because it's in the God's, God's Word for today version. So Proverbs 9, 7, if you correct a conceited person, you will only be insulted. Okay, so if somebody thinks they know it all, if somebody's very possibly manipulative and I'm going to get my own way no matter what, if you try to correct that person, you will be the one that gets insulted. So just know your deal going in, realize it, and learn when to say something and when not to, okay? If you reprimand evil people, you only get hurt. Never correct. This is Proverbs, okay? Never correct conceited people. They will hate you for it. But if you correct the wise, this is how I know when, when we're talking to the wise, because as soon as you give the word of God, they may not, they'll be like, oh, really? But they're like, it's the word of God. Okay, that's a wise person there because somebody's got to change, and it's not God that needs to, okay? But if you correct the wise, they will respect you. Anything you say to the wise will make them wiser. Whatever you tell the righteous will add to their knowledge. To be wise, you must first have reverence for the Lord. I mean, you got to say, you know what? This is right here. This is my final authority. What this says is how this is. You know, it's not, well, I know, but not that. It's, no, that is not. This is final authority right here, okay? So just learn to do things God's way, and it's so much better. I'm not going to say it's easy to start with, because our flesh really feels good sometimes about doing the wrong thing. Be wise, you must first reverence the Lord. If you know the Holy One, you have understanding. Verse 11, wisdom will add years to your life. Verse 12, you are the one who will profit if you have wisdom. And if you reject it, you are the one who will suffer, okay? So we know that Proverbs is, is a book of wisdom. And Solomon, because when the Lord came to him and said, you know, what do you, what do you want? And he said, I want to be able to wisely judge this people. And he said, because you did not ask for riches, I will give you wisdom and riches also. Now we know later on in his life, um, it was challenging because he chose to marry uh, women who had foreign gods and they eventually pulled him away from God and that's where it comes back with Ecclesiastics okay because it's, it's written in a place that says you know everything under the sun all right so that was him coming to realize that everything that he had tried to do apart from God was just futile it's not worth it okay it's not gonna it's not gonna give us the gain that we want so you know but proverbs hey 
He's still flowing in the wisdom of God there. So there's a lot of wisdom here. And we'll see. You know, I might be sharing more. Uh, I don't know about on relationships, but just more of the wisdom and the counsel on how to deal with different things. Because it's so important that we learn God's way of dealing in this earth and not fall trapped into the world's way of dealing with things. You know, doing what we have to do to get ahead. That is not the integrity of God. That is not the character of God. And yes, does it look like sometimes people that do that look like they're getting ahead faster? Yeah, sometimes. But according to the word of God, whenever we do it God's way, he adds no sorrow to it. All right? If you're going to do things the world's way, you may get ahead faster. But th there will be sorrow to it. But if you do it God's way, he adds no sorrow to it. Okay? And that's what the word of God says, and I choose to believe it. Amen? Let's stand to our feet. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you so much for all your goodness, for all your grace, your mercy. Holy Spirit, we come before you. And Lord, I ask that everything that has been shared, that Lord, you just... I know it's your heart to bring it up and to bring it out of us. I come against any type of condemnation that the enemy would try to put on anybody, Father God. And I thank you, Lord God, that, uh, Lord, you are revealing your heart to us. And you're teaching us how to walk in your ways and your precepts and see things from your perspective. We truly are seated with you in heavenly places. So open our eyes to see. Lord God, the, the situations, the adversities, the oppositions, and even the conflicts from your, from your viewpoint, Lord God. And make us, make us peacemakers, Lord. Make us restorers of the breach, Father God. Make us people who speak the word and bring peace into situations. We give you praise and we thank you so much for all your goodness and your wisdom and your help in walking this out and doing things your way, even in this week. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. We love you all. Go get them and have fun.